Hello, this is Luis de Miranda, and I, I will today present a short introduction to this methodology of philosophical health interviewing that um, I have developed, I should say I'm still developing because this is work in progress. I call it the SMILE PH uh, method, sense-making interviews, looking at the six elements of philosophical health. And uh, I will explain it here through the case of persons living with a spinal cord injury. Uh, I have conducted a pilot study in which I've interviewed um, people who have been living with a such injury, which means they are tetraplegic uh, in this case, and they are um, incapacitated uh, in their movement in many aspects, but not in their thinking. So as I said, this is a work in progress. Um, it was done in, in the case of um, spinal cord injury. I was contacted by uh, Professor Richard Levy at Ding Shopping University Hospital. And um, I have a dialogue with them where I test my ideas. Uh, also, Anestis Ivanoglu. And I start with this quote of Feynman, who um, actually is about the um the generosity of presenting work in progress um and and not only the genealogy that leads to what our results are but also the questions rather than uh fetishizing the work as um finished because it's a process work in process should be perhaps a better expression. So in terms of genealogy, some of you are aware that I'm advocating uh, the idea of philosophical health as something distinct from physical health and psychological health, published about this. Um, I have practiced myself philosophical counseling in individual or group contexts since uh, 2018. I've presented at UNESCO headquarters in Paris um, the idea of philosophical health. And um, I've been now through this um, specific pilot study uh, with people living with spinal cord injury developed this um six step methodology that i will talk about today uh, which is it about philosophical health and uh, sense making so what is philosophical health there is this idea very simple idea that there should be a form of coherence between our ways of thinking and speaking and our ways of acting. Um, in some cases, we might even infer um, as um, the Chinese philosopher Wang um, in the uh, 15th century that an ideal state would be that our actions and our knowledge and our reflection are one um, so there is this definition i proposed earlier philosophical health is a state of fruitful coherence between a person's ways of thinking and speaking and their ways of acting such that the possibilities for a good life and healing growth are increased and the needs for self intersubjective and biodiverse flourishing satisfied and then there are some principles of philosophical health that i will not enter into today such as mental heroism deep orientation critical creativity deep listening 
uh, because dialogue is an important dimension of philosophical health and ultimate possibility, which I call the creo, the real as creative process unfolding. So interestingly, there is idea of explicitation that in Latin has the same etymology than unfolding. So it's both a cognitive dialogic process, but also I believe a, a process at work uh, around us in what constitutes the, um, we could say the extasiation of the real, this constant production of reality from the ground of ultimate possibility that I call the creel. So that's it for the metaphysics. You can find more details elsewhere. Um, short on the protocol um, I interviewed for this pilot study four men and four women um, who have been living with spinal cord injury for more than 20 years and I conducted two sets of interviews the first very open um, in the sense of deep listening but still focused on the philosophical meaning, the worldview, what uh, in the um, um, ideational stances of the interview is had helped them uh, overcome this, um, what is sometimes called the trauma, which is probably uh, a good term. Uh, and um, in the second round of interviews, I wanted to be more um, specific and, and, and I came up with this idea of uh, sense-making interviews based on six elements. And that's because I've been thinking for a while about the sense of belonging in my book, and semblance about Esprit de Corps. A lot about the sense of the possible, since for me, uh, this um, original ground that I call the creel is about possibilization. And in this, many other authors um, have uh, before me stated uh, analogous ideas, um, Heidegger, uh, Bergson, Whitehead. Um, and um, in phenomenology and phenomenological psychology, this idea of the possible is extremely important. Um, for Jerome Bruner also um, in the US. So the six states are, and I take them in that order, uh, which of course can be discussed, but um, the bodily sense, how do you sense uh, your body? I have a little video about this six, so I won't enter into these details. The sense of self, the sense of belonging, the sense of the possible, the sense of purpose and the philosophical sense. And the interview remains open. So it's, it's really about the interpretation that the person might give to this senses. And uh, it um, may tap into topics such as the bodily activity, aesthetics, the looks, uh, but also the sensations, um, autonomy, care, control, enjoyment, feeling, frustration, pain, hardship, normality, what is a normal body, what is a normal sensation, peace, perception, reality, shame, sorrow, skill, trust, unity, the, the list is could go on. One example um, of quotation 
about enjoyment um, is about the fact that, well, even when we are living on a wheelchair, we um, may find ourselves capable of doing things that are very agile. And the, the surprise of the others uh, and uh, in their expectations can be a source of enjoyment. After this, the bodily sense comes the sense of self. And by the way, here I must say that I have also applied this um, sense-making interviewing methodology to people who do not have a spinal cord injury. Um, and um, for example, uh, with um, employees of, of uh, managers of uh, big corporation or simply individuals, young people who are trying to make sense of their lives. So in the sense of self, we might bring up um, topics such as autonomy, blame, the brain is the brain, the self, change, evolution, competition, curiosity, decisiveness, depression, emulation, again, enjoyment, but from the perspective of the self, goals, the good life, what is the good life for me, my way, what is my way, honesty, hope, the influences that we get, intention, learning, um, self-absorption, self-awareness, self-belief, self-confidence, self-creation. These are the kind of topics that can um, come up when we talk about the sense of self, self and, and um, curiosity, for example, uh, is a trait that uh, in my interviewing was associated with the um, capacity to positivize and also um, with the ability not to be too self-absorbed. The sense of belonging, which is the, the, the third step third topic that I address in this um, interviewing sessions, which by the way, uh, you can have a session of a, say 45 minutes, uh, one hour that goes through these six elements. But then, uh, and this is something that I have tried, I believe successfully outside of this pilot study is that then you sp you can spend one session in each of these senses. So one session of 45 minutes with um, the um, bodily sense, a second with the sense of self, etc. So sense of belonging, we can touch upon topics like alienation, assistance, care, collaboration, community, divinity. I belong perhaps to, to um, a higher power, to a sense of a higher power. Um, what was sometimes called Gefühl in German theology, the 19th century. Uh, emulation how the others um, push me to overcome myself. Expectation by being um, a model, for example. Expectations, family, friends, humanity. Do I belong to humanity? It's not so obvious. Do I feel like I belong to humanity? Of course. It's making sense. It's about how people perceive things, not necessarily about how things are objectively. If... Uh, it can be the case that they are uh, completely independently objective, which can be debated. 
identification, inspiration, lifestyle. We might belong, we might feel that we belong to certain groups, nature, belonging to nature, peers, self belonging also, the um the um the sense that we are in harmony with ourselves with ourself um place belonging to a place solidarity where my belonging is supposed to be is where i choose to live and how i choose to live it right so then there is this dialectic of course between the sense of self and the sense of belonging which one comes first this can be discussed for some um, philosophers, uh, sociologists, um, the, the belonging comes first and then the self emerges from uh, the group. Um, for others, it's the opposite. It's, of course, a, a I would say, a creolactic process. Um, but for the purpose of my methodology, I've chosen to to speak of the self before I speak of the belonging, because this is the epoch we live in. We've been trained to perceive ourselves as individuals. Uh, whether we are right to, to do so or not, um, it is um, more, um, feels more natural uh, to us today the sense of the possible is a sort of the articulation uh, between this the first steps which can be shared with animals and other beings because i believe that other beings can they of course have a bodily sense and uh, some some sense of self and of belonging of course and of sense of the possible, but the sense of the possible is perhaps where um, we as a human species started to make a difference in the terms of what we can do. Topics such as ability, belief, choice, control, courage, creativity, doing, drive education effectuation is the capacity to um use the resources that we have rather than try to find resources elsewhere energy faith flexibility here again the good life but from the perspective of the possible um identification the sense of the possible of course uh, which, like all these other senses, can be more or less depleted, um, implies a certain idea of the impossible. Opportunities, again, the idea of normality, very important for uh, this sense too. Society, vision, peers, possibilities. And... Um, here we have a quote um, from a woman, 43, tetraplegic since 1997. Uh, I've always looked at possibilities and tried to ignore those things that are kind of negative. Um, if you focus on possibilities and things that are good, those things grow. Then we enter a realm that might be considered properly the human realm. Um, at least this is what Aristotelian ethics proposed. And we might discuss if other beings have purpose, but um, the sense of purpose is a level where we start to. Um, focus on ideas and um, motivations that go beyond the self. Contr like 
what kind of contribution we uh, bring to the world. Again, the idea of divinity, um, but also egotism, which is not egoism, egotism, the idea of expressing a personal style, uh, which might carry itself ideas and values. Generosity, the good life again, but in uh, a more political sense now. What's the greater purpose? A lot of people feel that they do not have a greater purpose. Um, inspiration, love, meaning. Um, having models, role models, posterity, solidarity, work. And here I have a long quote, I won't go into it, but there's this idea that um, this person donated uh, after the spinal cord injury um, accident, donated the insurance money to uh, an orphanage in Thailand, which is still active uh, 20 years later. And, and I think this is a very interesting case of self-transcendence. Um, my accident became something bigger just by love and being, having an open ear to something that could change people's lives. I could find purpose in my bad situation, becoming a good situation through that donation, through that money that was donated. And um, here is an interesting case also, all I think, of... Um, articulation between the um, the self uh, development and 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 self transcendence the egotism that we talked about because of course it's gratifying to feel that we have given but also the capacity to to place ourselves in a grander context in the context of um interdependence and growth, collective growth. Last but not least, the philosophical sense which we arrive at after uh, having reflected on the five other elements. Um, and this makes it smoother uh, as opposed to asking people immediately about their philosophical sense, which is something that, that might be intimidating. So I find that going through this process and starting with the bodily sense and slowly um, um, perhaps climbing the cognitive uh, levels makes it uh, smoother to arrive at something that is significantly articulated at the stage of the philosophical sense. And so the philosophical sense is what, how do I see the world? How do I explain it? What's my grander um, vision, cosmology, um, system, or, or, or um, draft of a system to explain why the world it is like it is? And ideas like autonomy, creation, curiosity, destiny, um, freedom, gratefulness, human rights, mechanism in the sense is, is are we living in a machine or some sort of simulation or, or, or is there freedom? Mindfulness is a topic, of course, uh, in all its different uh, definitions. Um, posterity, what, what will remain of my actions once I am um, dead? Religion, respect, what is right or wrong? Solidarity, what's spiritual? Um, what's, what is life? Thinking trust thinking because this is also of course a process we do not expect necessarily people's philosophical sense 
to be once and for all um, written on stone. Understanding uniqueness, trust in a in a grander sense. So. Another and last quote um, from a man who uh, is 64 and made a diagram um, about the perception of um, in his life of good and bad moments. And he's saying that it looks like an electrocardiogram, which is quite a beautiful metaphor, um, a heart rhythm. This reminds me of one day I. I consider a, a picture um, of an island with trees and the island was reflected on the water. And um, it seemed to me that this was a quite interesting metaphor of life in terms of sound. You know, when you have these sound waves go, go up and down. In any case, a process a process that um, unfolds and that may need um, different moments to gain its unity. If here we are almost in the um, realm of what Hegel called the negative uh, in his uh, phenomenology of spirit, for example, the idea that uh, we do need to um, to be confronted with the ordeal of the negative, whether it's negative experience or simply the obstacles and the resistance of the real, but what proceeds, what um, unfolds, what becomes is something more than the real it's a creative real it's a it's a creel and therefore hegel thought that this unfolding was a dialectic process i prefer to call it a creolectic process because it's not only about binary oppositions but i think hegel meant something quite similar so of course this methodology which is meant to be used um, as a sort of a philosophical health um, scanning or, or, or checkup is um, can be applied in um, care, person-centered care in particular. Though there is today this two um, um, conflicting ideas of person-centered care on the one hand and personalized medicine on the other. Personalized medicine, although it uses the term person, focus on statistics, genetics, um, big data, nothing really um, attached to the singularity of you as a person, really. So some uh, uh, specialists of person-centered care, like Michael Laughlin, uh, professor in applied philosophy and co-director of the um, University of West London's European Institute for Person-Centered Health, think that philosophical health is the natural uh, development of person-centered care, where in which we do not ask people only what's the matter with you, but also what matters to you. So this was a very short introduction to um, the methodology that I called Smile PH, sense-making interviews, looking at the six elements of philosophical health. And I'll be writing, talking more about this in the uh, near future. Thank you. Don't forget to check the site philosophical philosophical.health and other interviews about philosophical health that I have in this channel.